What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a game called Dark Quest. Uh, this game seems to, from the time that I've spent with it so far, this game seems to be a big fan of Hand of Fate. That's actually what it reminds me of the most. The only difference is in Hand of Fate, like the combat system, is sort of an Arkham Asylum style combo based system, very much rooted in action games. Whereas Dark Quest, when you go into combat, it's very much a tactical RPG. And so this game sort of seems to mix out the idea of Hand of Fate style tabletop gameplay, but also tactical RPG battles with kind of characters that are unlocked. You form your party at the beginning of the game, and you set out and you see how far you can go. So today we're going to be taking a look at the game for about 25-35 minutes, seeing if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this you did indeed want to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, you can find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I'm live most days of the week. I don't really have a schedule anymore. I kind of just stream in the afternoons when I've got time in between cutting all these videos. But still, you are more than welcome to join me. Let's go ahead and start the game. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and delete that profile real fast right there. And then we'll jump on into an empty slot. And so we need to pick our characters. At the beginning of the game, you start out with a couple of decisions. You can have a barbarian, you can have a dwarf, you can have an archer, you can have a wizard, or you can have the lady. And you get to pick between four of these. So I figure we'll go for the dwarf. dwarf. And as you can see, the game does have voice acting. It does have a narrator that that's actually what reminds me of Hand of Fate the most, is that you've got a narrator, you've got kind of a narrator or a dungeon master that talks during the whole thing. He doesn't talk quite as much as Hand of Fate, but when you roll die, he'll be like, roll the die. And then like when you get your result, he'll be like, a 10! You know, and he kind of like, I suppose has interjections and also kind of exclamations to show excitement and things that are happening. We'll take an archer. archer. Uh, you can look at their abilities by right clicking on them. So every character has different abilities. Don't pay too much to the don't pay too much attention to the cards. It's really just kind of the representative style of the game. I wouldn't say that it's a deck builder, really, if that's the thing that's going to turn you off. It's more like the characters have abilities and the abilities happen to be on cards, but there's no energy. There's no, like, management or anything on that end. It's just every turn you pick what ability you want to use. And you don't, like, discard these or anything. You don't draw them or anything. It's just the representational style. On top of that, every character has attributes. Uh, although they're not tooltipped, so I don't know exactly what they do. I know what they are from having played the game previously, but I don't know how they actively affect the game and its roles. I haven't really been able to derive that so far. So you've got strength, agility, intelligence, and perception. Uh, whereas over here, apparently the archer has less perception than the dwarf, but he has very, very high agility, I guess. Uh, their stats will matter because you have varying skill checks and things you're going to be making on the in-between combats. Like, it'll be like, you come to a thicket, there is a rope in a tree, do you pull it, you know? And then you got to decide if you want to pull it or not, depending on the stat that's associated. We'll take the wizard, and we'll take the barbarian, why barbarian not? Sounds good to me. Uh, I took the lady on my last run. Wasn't impressed by the lady on my last run. I, I took her because I was hoping she would fill some kind of, like, priest role. But no, she didn't really fill in a priest role. She just kind of was there. I, I really never found an effective way to use her, in all honesty. It's probably because I'm bad at video games. Uh, we don't really need to know about the exploration mode. I've already gone through and played the tutorial, so I know what's going on. If you want something to happen in this game, you click on the deck over here. And it will draw a tarot card and something will happen. So let's do that. The Elder nods as you approach. Adventurers, I have gathered you here to wish you well. Only you can stop the evil wizard and chaos magic and also forest fires. Uh, we can receive a rune. So from our runes, we can get 30% more gold on adventuring cards, or we can get plus one healing on adventuring cards. I like the idea of healing. This game has no minimum nor maximum when it comes to the character's HP. Well, it does have a minimum. I mean, when you get down to zero, you die. Uh, but there's no maximum on HP. So, like, you can continuously just heal people, and they will get up to, like, 50 or 60 HP. The Wagon Merchant greets you warmly. Heroes, everything rests on you. Take this armor to aid your quest. What do you mean? The world is ending and every merchant isn't lining up to extort me for money in a world that is frequently falling apart? The Majesty. That always, that's like one of my fantasy tropes that annoys the hell out of me. Like, it'll be like the literal end of the world. Everything will be falling apart and the vendors will be like, 
No, 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 you must pay me 123 gold if you want this item, even though you're the one responsible for protecting me and negating my end. Like, it's one of those annoying things, dude. I'll take the flail. Let's do that. And then we have to equip the flail on somebody. I will put the flail on my dwarf. So now he has a chance, a 50% chance to get an extra damage on any attack that focuses on the enemy's body. It's basically physical versus magical. The alchemist ushers you over. Let it burn. Uh, please, fellows, take a potion to strengthen you for the challenges ahead. When someone ushers me over in a video game, I just assume that they're just like, it's never for me to say this, but it's coming from the heart. Like, I assume they do everything in musical song and dance. Uh, we get a potion right here. Add two damage on your next attack or double damage on next weapon attack. Uh, probably just take the plus two for right now. I think it comes out to being more than the double for a lot of the attacks that we have. May the spirits guide you on the path ahead. Venture forth and slay those who oppose you. Okay, that seems a little severe. That seems like we might commit some murders. But, you know, uh, we've got a card over here. Thorns! The dwarf steps in thorns. Great. Roll the dice and see what happens. Five. We rolled a five. We carefully pass through the thorns unscathed. You can re-roll. You get free re-rolls right here if you click on this little dice. Uh, just in case you need a result to come out the way you want it to. Uh, you discover a ferocious river, though there may be a way to cross it. Test the party's agility to see what happens next. Okay. Five. No! A hero has fallen in the water and receives one damage. Rip. Uh, so apparently our agility archer was the one that slipped and fell. Oh, irony. Oh, irony. The tiny hermit reluctantly greets you. I don't want any trouble. Please take this gold and be on your way. He just, like, gives us free money because we're threatening? Man, what a way to live life. I'll take it. The forest comes alive as tendrils snake and lash towards you. Prepare yourself. Your first battle. All right, so this is battle. Oh, they got the first attack right there. That kind of sucks. All right, well, this is our first battle, and the general way that this goes is that this game kind of has, like, a weird combat system. You just kind of get used to it. I can't explain to you exactly how it works, but, like, you just sort of intuitively figure it out after a battle or two. Uh, so, basically, you pick a character. That character will act. Um, you've got cards to pick from. These cards are not drawn. These are just their abilities on cards. Uh, they could have just as easily done it with like a UI with like a skill bar or whatever else. Literally the exact same thing. Uh, but over here, we can deal one to three ranged body damage. The next enemy to attack, so it's me go, you go. So after I take my turn, whoever is denoted in purple will take their turn. I'm going to do a ranged attack, and we're just going to shoot that guy right there. And then we're going to kind of move back over here. Because that attack comes with a movement packaged into it. He's going to move up and attack my dwarf. Unfortunately, my dwarf is having kind of a bad day right now. Uh, he's got a couple of abilities he can attack. He can drink beer, which gives him a chance to miss or double his next swing. And then he can skip his turn. And then, of course, we've got that power potion, which is inside our consumables right now. I'm going to attack this guy. Uh, if they have me flanked like this, they get bonuses. I'm also going to have my barbarian step on in and attack from that side right there. And that's our first battle on out of the way. We only took three damage, but we do get to level up a hero now. Every time you do a battle, you get to upgrade somebody and add more abilities to, like, their little roster. So we will upgrade a hero. I choose to upgrade the wizard. Uh, so we can get Tornado. One to two damage per character on a line and removes all of their actions. We can do one to three magic damage to three enemies. That's pretty good. We can do three to five damage to one enemy. Or we can make our wizard invisible. Okay, I'm going to go for the lightning storm. That sounds rad as hell. I think those also upgrade. That's what these little gems are right here, is I think you can focus on spells. And as you put more focus into a spell, it gets, like, better. Uh, there's a bear. A savage bear emerges from the woods, surprisingly silently. How did a bear learn to move like that? Act fast. Uh, let's attack him. I want another upgrade, dude. I'm, I'm ready for the upgradesies. Uh, we probably want our wizard... To, like, move the hell away. Pew! There it is. Two damage out to the bar. And, of course, our dwarf has been chewed on as per, per normal. Uh, let's go ahead and smack this guy. We got four damage off. That's great. The bear is dead. That's a pretty powerful dwarf right there. If you can just, like, one-shot a bear to the face. I feel like he's earned some upgrades. So let's go ahead and give him an upgrade. He's bleeding profusely and looks terrible at the moment. 
And so we can give him Iron Barrel. So it's a barrel that will tank for us for two hits. We can get Spike Barrel, returns back two to three damage when it breaks. Or we can get an Exploding Barrel, which deals one damage in a three by three. Let's go ahead and do the Iron Barrel. That sounds good. We'll Iron Barrel it on up. Something unusual catches your eye behind the trees. Investigating, you find someone trapped in a hanging cage. They ask that you release them, explaining that they're an apt lancer. Okay, well, we've unlocked the lancer as a character now. Sounds good. You meet a treant in the forest that seems different from the others. Its body cracks as it unfurls, revealing gifts. It waits for you to choose in silence. Um, let's heal a character. I was gonna say, dude, my dwarf looks terrible right now, so we should probably heal some of those boo-boos and scuffings, man. Roll the skull of fate. The skull of fate. All right. Ten. Nice, dude. I'll take that. A ten. Like, I don't know why, but the exclamations of the narrator. Like, this is a really simple game that does not have a crazy amount of moving parts. But I'll tell you what works for me. Just having some random bearded guy in the background just being like, a ten. Like, when you roll a ten, for some reason, just makes me enjoy the game more. I don't know why. I can't explain it. All right, next card, a blacksmith. He eyes you as you approach. Well met, adventurer. What do you need? Um, I'll take an equipment card. Yeah, sure. We've got leather boots of agility, and we've got a magical staff. I think I'll take the magic staff, and I think we'll put that on the wizard, since he's like our only guy that's using magic right now, so he's got a chance to get a plus one damage on every attack. You see a shrine dedicated to the spirits of the forest. Will they hear your prayers in these trying times? I say let's just pray for healing since there's no top cap. Nine. That's good. That works. In German, that's got to be a really, really confusing event, though. Like, did you succeed? Roll the dice. Nine! Like, that's got to be a little bit confusing. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll heal the wizard a little bit and get his HP on up. I'm on a quest right now to get everybody to 10 HP. A bunch of low-life thieves emerge from the trees. Must be tough trekking through here with all that stuff weighing you down. Let us test your load. Or lighten your load. Testing our load's different. We can intimidate them. Yeah, let's try it. Your neck cracks, slowly moving into a classic hero pose with your weapons drawn. You hope your balance will keep up. Test your party strength to see if you succeed. A ten! All right, we win. The party grows stronger. Use your experience to upgrade a card or learn a new one. All right. Select a character. I want this lightning storm ability to be way better. That's what I want. That lightning storm ability seems like it's going to be the goat if I can just develop it. You've reached the edge of the forest on the horizon. You see landmarks to explore. Where would you like to go? To the undead room? It doesn't really seem like we have an option. Like, you can ask me where I would like to go, but if there's only one destination, like, meh, you might as well put on the card, you have to go to the undead ruins. I do like how the art changes when you transition in between biomes. That's nice. There is a battle. You spy a horde of shambling undead monsters in the ruins. What will you do? Let us fight them. We don't shy away from battle out here. We keep it gangster. Uh, unfortunately, all of our range guys are out front. That kind of concerns me. Lightning storm? Yeah, dude. That was awesome. Let's, ow, I've been arched. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna put down an iron barrel. There is no path to the target location, rip. What about to him? Can I get over there? All right, we'll just smite him then. Ow, he has lightning spell too. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I think the wizard needs to die. That's just the that's the feeling that I have is that we need to kill that wizard right there. Otherwise, bad things are gonna happen. Uh, barbarian, go ahead and slay that dude. There we go, perfect. He hath been slain. And then on this side, we'll hope that we get the dice roll. Ah, oh, we rolled a one. Lame. Okay. We'll do a ranged attack over here, and you can just stay where you're at. I don't feel any pressing need to really move around. Uh, we can do a magic damage right there, and we'll kind of move up. Perfect. Okay, now we get our upgrade. Uh, I, I want Lightning Storm to continue to become more awesome. Like, I'm putting all my hopes on Lightning Storm right now because it hits everything on the battlefield for, like, six damage. You feel a draft emanating from behind a bookshelf. A secret passage, perhaps? You could move it and see what's on the other side. Let's do it. All right. 
one. Ah, dude, re-roll it. Ten. Yeah! Thank you, randomness. Uh, a stash of coins, finders, keepers. All right, all right, all right. We find a stash of coins on the floor, finders, keeper. Okay, all right, we're doing financially well right now. To your surprise, you find provisions. Their mint condition seems odd in this place. It could be a trap, or it could fill your belly. Meow, it never turned down a free cheeseburger, dude. With your tummies rumbling in unison, you decide to take your chances. Roll the dice. Seven. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That kind of like buffs off some of the scuffings from that previous Archer, fight, too. Test your perception. The archer is about to step into a dangerous trap. Two spears are lodged in the far wall at chest height. Test your perception to see if you trigger them. Oh, boy. Five. Oh, no. Ow! You got my wizard impaled, bro. The room appears to be empty, but that makes you curious to uncover its secrets. You search the room looking for false bricks and cracks to reveal some amazing hidden treasure or passage. Eight. We find 40 to 60 gold. You stumble upon an aged, dusty sarcophagus. Somebody important must have been buried here. Maybe their treasure is there with them. Test your party strength. All right, all right, all right. Seven. Yeah. The sarcophagus is open. Roll the dice to see what you find. Nine. More money. I would like to spend this Test money at some point. Strength. A large portcullis blocks the path forward. Your mighty heroes could lift it if you put your backs into it. Test your primary strength or your party strength to see what happens. Eight. I mean, we lift the gate and pass. All right. You find an old alchemist table. Potions were mixed here, and the myriad stains and burns seem to, to, con or seem to connote that some were more successful than others. Uh, if your health is below five, heal for three to four. Yeah, that'd be nice. Another portcullis. We're seeing repeat events already. That's not good. Uh, the noise has attracted a nearby monster, which we must now battle. Okay, yeah, my dwarf is getting kind of beat up. Dwarf, go ahead and knock the armor off of him and move around to the other side of him. There we go. And then you move into a flanking position on the front. Flanking does matter in this game, by the way. Uh, you get bonuses to your damage or whatever if you're, like, flanking. So that is one of the, the limited amounts of kind of like agency that you have in these fights. And so the enemy is now down. Archer, test your Man, our archer has stepped on every trap in the history of the world ever. This guy is totally fired. Nine. Luckily, he made the dice roll on it. But man, if you got a spike trapped one more time, dude, this majestic feature may have provided water for the entire keep, but it was abandoned many moons ago. Okay, yeah, heal everybody up. Looks good to me. Dwarf, roll the skull of fate. Okay. Two. Ah, dude. Lame. The skull of fate is apparently a paltry douche. On the horizon, a large winged dragon is perched on a mound of gold and bodies. Lots and lots of bodies. But we get a rune, and runes permanently modify our entire run, so I kind of want it. Let's go fight it, dude. What's the worst that can happen? Worst case, oh, dude, he's got homies. Oh, no, dude. All right, lightning storm him. Lightning storm worked pretty good, man. I'm not even upset about the way lightning storm went. Lightning storm went pretty good. Uh, put down an iron barrel right there. Yeah, that sounds like a decent enough plan. And then we'll deal some body damage on this side. We have no path to the target. Okay, no path to the target. No path to the target. Rip. I guess skip your turn. Uh, we will move the archer. And we will have him attack you and then move over to here to make a path for the dwarf. And then Barbarian, now is the time. Move in and strike the enemy in the booty hole. There we go, booty hole strike. Booty hole strike is always successful. Uh, we'll move up and we'll do a weapon strike right here for the flank. Oh, he didn't attack the barrel, dude. He was supposed to attack the barrel. Apparently this bone dragon is smarter than its, con than its contemporaries. Rip. All right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead and move over here with the rest of the ranged line. We'll kill the dragon. A powerful rune materializes in front of you. Its magical power will surely help your party. We can get first strike, plus one damage on the first attack of a battle, or plus four healing whenever you get a party card. Let's do that. We do like to party a lot. 
You reach the resting place of many heroes. If your prayers are answered, you can bring back one who fell too soon. Uh, we don't have any dead guys, so I'll just take the two rerolls. You spy a horde of shambling undead monsters in the ruins. What do you want to do? Attack! We don't run away from battle in this party. In this party, we head straight on in. Go ahead and give him the old lightning bolt, brother. We got one kill out. That's better than nothing. He's been struck. Okay. All right. All right. You move up. Deal some body damage to that guy right there. Yeah, take the long way around, man. Don't even worry about it. It's cool. Take your time. Is that a dwarf right there, dude? Is that like a heretical dark dwarf? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get in behind him. Murder this dude. We got his armor off, so that's good. I do kind of question what our party's more... I, I, I question our party's motives since the first thing we do in every battle is tear off the enemy's armor, but, you know... We might be on this adventure for differentiating reasons than other adventures. Uh, let's upgrade a hero. Uh, we can get critical strike, double damage once every four weapon attacks. At the start of combat, fire an arrow at an enemy. Select three targets, deal one to two damage. Yeah, that does seem pretty awesome. Let's get the free attack on start, though, because that doesn't use up our actions, so I'll take it. Another battle! Fight them! Whoa, my friends. Uh, obviously, we open with lightning strike, which basically one-tapped their entire party. Unfortunately, well, actually, he didn't take any damage right there. He only took it to the armor. Nice. There we go. Get the flanky spankies on him, dude. Give him the flanky spankies. Perfect, dude. A flawless victory for our party. Upgrade a hero. a hero. Can I upgrade surprise attack? Is that a thing? Oh, it's already fully upgraded. Okay. Well then, uh, double damage once every four weapon attacks. I'll take that. I don't know if it persists outside of combat like it keeps wizard. track. Oh, dude, it's the wizard's fault this time. He stepped on a spike trap again. Um, Reroll it. Seven. There we go. That's better. I'll take that. Dwarf, test your intelligence. Dwarf, I cast a spell on you. Test your intelligence to see if you resist. If you fail, you are imprisoned and unable to join the next battle. Gross. Reroll it. Nine. There we go. I need my dwarf, dude. My dwarf needs to be with me. Armies of the undead have gathered in the past that leads out of the ruin and are preventing your exit. The only way forward is to cut them down. Well, sir, I am ready. Let us cut. Did I just... Wait, hold on. What just happened? I think they just got free attacks or something. Lightning them! We've got to limit their numbers, man. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. Is that a chicken? Why is there a chicken? I guess I'll attack the chicken. Um, I guess just attack that guy and then move over there. There we go. Nice kill. Nice kill. Uh, we'll move over here and maybe we get a four roll on this guy. Nope, we got a three roll. But it's okay. I'm going to let him finish him off. He has earned the rights of killing. All right, party upgrade. I want to see what happens with his... Oh, it's every three attacks. Gotcha. Okay, I'll take that. You have reached the end of the ruins on the horizon. You see landmarks to explore. Where would you like to go? You can't ask me where I want to go if there's only one destination! Language has meaning. All right, fair enough. Whatever. Hmm, goblin, your coin all glimmers the same. Take a look at my wares and then away with you before my brethren catch you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know how much money I have because it's not listed on this screen right here. That seems like kind of a major oversight. Would recommend that they add that back. Uh, just, you know, I would like to know how many coins I have. Um, it, it's difficult to tell right now. Take the flail, the health potion, extra action. Dude, I could afford everything. It didn't even matter, dude. I just cleared out the entire store like, a, like an absolute bamf, dude. Like a bamf. Uh, let's use the healing potions. Oh, I guess I'll use the healing potions in battle then. You see a dark, ominous tunnel. Do you enter it? I fear no tunnel. To your surprise, it's a treasure cave unguarded with traps. See, that's why we walk into tunnels right there. That's also why we check behind every single waterfall for the potential treasure that may be there as well. You see a dark, ominous... Yes, I enter. It's a goblin's lair! Okay, uh, we can attack the goblins or we can step on our toes and escape. Fair enough. Oh, we still get the upgrade? Hell yeah, dude. 
a character. I'm gonna keep upgrading. Yeah, there we go. Make him hit for double damage every other attack. That sounds good. The cave is bereft of anything. The emptiest cave that you've ever seen. Okay, all right. We've got another battle over here. We can run for our lives or we can attack. Eh, attack. We need upgrades, bro. We've got lightning strike to carry us through this. Nothing can go wrong. And we one-shot at a guy on the first turn, dude. See? And then there's two more kills right there. I fear no goblin horde. I feel no terror in my heart. Get out of my way, goblin wizard. Nobody cares about you. Ow, I've taken more damage. I've taken more damages. Actually, we should not do that. We should attack the wizard over here because he's got mental armor instead of uh, instead of the normal beefcake armor. There we go. Wipe him out real fast. Then over here, maybe like weapon attack, dude. Ow, okay, that was a little stingy. I hated it. Uh, I will go ahead and use a healing potion on him just to get his health back up. We'll deal some body damage over here. What do you have going on, Wazard? Let's just shoot a magic missile at him. Pew! There it is. Magic missile. I feel like that's an attack that makes a pew noise. Like, that's what it feels like to me. But yeah, it's a dark quest. It's kind of a simple, it's kind of a simple game. But honestly, it has its charms. Like, I grew up playing very, very simple pen and paper board games like this. And so I tend to enjoy them. I especially like the fact that they've gone for kind of an old school look with the whole thing. Kind of harkening back to the middle 80s. And so, like, I kind of dig it. Like, could it use some more voice acting? Sure, absolutely. Could the combat system use a little bit more fleshing out? Like, absolutely. But I am enjoying myself right now, and I do think that there's space in the world of video games for simple games. And so for, like, the areas that I feel like could have a little bit more depth to them, I am still enjoying myself in kind of that old-school, dice-rolling, classic RPG way. And so anyways, this is Dark Quest. I hope you guys liked it. I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But for now, it's time for me to go. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.